Today I want to share with you the best Rock Hornish game hen recipe with a delicious raspberry sauce. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient dense foods like bone broth, ferment, sourdough and more. So if you enjoy learning about those things consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to click on the little notification bell below that'll let you know every time I upload a new video. If at any time you want to jump ahead, just open the description underneath this video and you'll see timestamps for everything I'm going to cover. Also in the description underneath this video is a link to the recipe where you can read it online or print it out. Well before we go over the ingredients I have to tell you a cute story as to where this recipe came from. This was a recipe that was provided to us by my college roommate's mother and she told her daughter, my roommate, if there's a fella at college that you like invite him over for dinner and make these rock cornish game hens and I'm confident he's going to ask you out on a date and maybe even date you more than one date. Well, she found a fella she liked, she made these rock cornish hens, he asked her out on a date and they dated their whole senior year. So I think these rock cornish hens are the way to a man's heart. And the nice thing about making rock cornish hens, not just for a fella you might be interested in, but this is a wonderful meal to make whenever you're having family or friends over for dinner. You can certainly make this at any time, but it's especially nice at holiday time. There's really very little preparation and once you get in the oven, the oven does all the work for you. So you can enjoy your family and friends and you don't have to worry about trying to prepare a lot of different things in the kitchen. Now I'm just going to make four rock cornish hens, but you can easily double this and make eight. And I'm going to keep them whole because I really think that looks so wonderful when you bring it to the table. Everyone sort of gets their own little, in a way, something that looks like a little mini turkey. But if you want to stretch this, you can easily cut these in half and serve everyone a half a rock cornish hen. And then you can just add some extra sides. Now the first thing that you're going to want to do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Then what I've got here are my four rock cornish hens and I've defrosted these and patted them dry. Now the other ingredients you're going to need are a tablespoon of salt, a teaspoon of black pepper, and optionally if you like to add in a little spice, a half to a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. Now I've got my salt and my two peppers just mixed in a little container here because I'm going to be working this into my hens and I don't want to be touching my salt and pepper shakers. Next you're going to need four tablespoons of melted butter. Now I'm going to stuff these hens and I'm going to stuff them with a wild rice mixture. You can certainly leave them unstuffed or you could stuff them with a bread mixture that you may like. But the nice thing about stuffing them is it looks very nice having the stuffing sort of flowing out of the cavity. It looks very abundant. Plus that serves as a side dish that you really don't have to do very much work with. Now I'm going to be using a wild rice blend which I find holds up very well as a stuffing in these hens. And what I do is I do cook it but to the point where it almost is still a little bit al dente meaning that it has like a little bit of a bite still to it since it'll be cooking additional time inside the hens. I find that this particular wild rice blend works very well. This is from Lundberg and it's just called wild blend rice. But the reason I like it is it's a very nutritious mixture. It's got long grain brown rice, sweet brown rice, which gives it a little bit of a sticky consistency, which works very well when stuffing it into the hens, as well as being, uh, it's very complimentary with the raspberry sauce. And then it also has the wild rice, the red rice, which gives it like a, a little bit of a, almost a cranberry hue to it, which again works very nicely with the raspberry sauce. And then finally it has some black rice, which is supposed to be kind of a rare rice. And so this is especially nice for special occasions. Now the other ingredient, almost the star of the show in a sense, even though the hens are, are the main, main event, but what makes this recipe so luscious is that you are going to coat your hens with raspberry jelly or raspberry jam. 
The ideal thing is if you can find raspberry jelly. I'm not able to find that at my grocery store, but maybe you'll be able to, or maybe you even make it homemade. So instead, what I'm going to be using is a red raspberry jam. And I wasn't even able to find this without seeds. That would have been ideal. But since it does have seeds, once we warm it up, I'm just going to run it through a fine mesh strainer to get rid of the seeds. Now, can you use other jellies or jams? Definitely. But there's something about this red raspberry that just makes for a beautiful color and a beautiful flavor. But I have used other jams when I've made this. I've used uh, apricot, I've used peach, I've used apple jelly. Apple jelly is nice because it's very easy to do and you don't have to worry about uh, any seeds or, you know, it's an actual jelly. Uh, which is always your first choice if you can find a jelly. But you can really vary this up in any way that you want. But I highly recommend you try it with some raspberry jelly or raspberry jam first. Now, I like to do this on a rimmed baking sheet. Some of you may know it as a jelly roll pan uh, or a half sheet cake pan. This works very well. And I highly recommend, I don't use a lot of aluminum foil, but I highly recommend that you, if you do this in a baking sheet, that you uh, put some aluminum foil on it or some parchment paper because the jelly or the jam, whatever you're using, does make things very sticky and a little hard to clean. So being able to make cleanup easy is a plus. Now you can also do this in a roasting pan as well. My roasting pan doesn't have a flat rack and this flat rack doesn't fit into my roasting pan. So that's another reason why I'm using the uh, baking sheet. Now, if you've just got the baking sheet, you can put your hands right down onto your foil or your parchment paper, whatever you've lined your baking sheet with. But I do have this cooling rack that fits perfectly into my baking sheet. So I'm going to actually put my hands onto that. Lifting them up a little does help them brown a little better on their underside rather than sitting flat on the baking sheet. Uh, but if you don't have a rack like this, don't worry. Uh, you could always slice up a little bit of carrot or celery and almost make like a little bit of a, a homemade uh, roasting rack to kind of help lift your hens right off of the off of being directly on the baking sheet. Now the first thing I'm going to do is just take a little bit of this butter and I'm just going to brush it onto my uh, baking rack here or my cooling rack actually uh, just so that nothing sticks. Now I'm just going to set up a little assembly line here and what I'm going to do is take one hen at a time and I'm going to take a little bit of my seasoning here with just the salt and the black pepper and the red pepper flakes and then I'm going to just rub that into the cavity. Once I get all of that seasoning in there and massaged around into the cavity a little bit, then what I'm going to do is take my wild rice. I've divided it into four sections, basically, just a rough measure here. And I'm going to start putting this into the cavity of my hen. And I'm really going to pack it nicely. Now, once you get the wild rice stuffed in there, you can just go ahead and put this on your baking sheet. And then what I like to do is take the little wing tips and just tuck them under the breast. Now the reason I like to tuck the wing tips underneath the breast is that if they're just sort of sticking up, they tend to burn. So this way you're protecting them. Now, you could certainly tie the little legs together if you wanted, but because we do have them stuffed with the wild rice, I think it's best to just leave the little legs untied and just have the wild rice showing coming out of the cavity. Well, I'll go ahead and continue stuffing the rest of these hens and then I'll show you the next step. Well, I've got each of these hens all stuffed now and they look wonderful. And I'm gonna take our melted butter and our brush here. This is a silicone brush. It works very nicely, but if you have a regular pastry brush, that'll work fine too. Just when you get to the point where you use the raspberry jelly, which I'll show you once we get these hens cooking, uh, the pastry brush can be a little more difficult to clean, but the silicone brush is very easy to clean. Well, the hens are all brushed with the melted butter, and now I'm gonna use the rest of the salt and pepper mixture, and I'm just gonna go ahead and sprinkle this on top of all the hens. 
Well, I gave my hands a good washing and now we're ready to get these into the oven. Now, every rock Cornish hen is slightly different in size, but they generally take somewhere between an hour to an hour and 15 minutes to roast at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if you want, at about 30 minutes, you can take a peek at them and you can baste them with some of the butter that may have melted off. And at the 60 minute mark, the one hour mark, you're going to want to test them by putting a thermometer, a, one of those quick read thermometers that you use to insert into cooked meats to make sure that your hens have reached 180 degrees Fahrenheit. And you're just gonna to wanna to stick your meat thermometer into the thigh of the hen. And when it's at 180 degrees Fahrenheit, your hens are done. And once they're done, that's when we're going to baste them with our raspberry sauce and just let them be under the broiler watched very closely for about a minute. And that raspberry sauce for that little bit of time under the broiler is going to turn these into something that's so lusciously sweet, sticky, and very delicious. Well, I'll get these into the oven and we'll make our raspberry sauce. Now, if you have raspberry jelly, this process is extremely easy for you. All you're gonna to need to do is just get a small saucepan, put your raspberry jelly in there, and just warm it up to the point where it's somewhat liquidy. And the same is true if you're using raspberry jam. Just warm it until it's somewhat in a liquidy state. Now, since I have raspberry jam that has seeds in it, I'm just gonna to have to take that extra step and uh, run it through a little bit of a mesh strainer to get the seeds out. Well, I warmed up my jam to the point where it's nice and liquidy, and now I'm just gonna pour it through this very fine mesh strainer, and we'll get all those seeds out. Now I'm just gonna use my spatula to work my jam down through this mesh strainer and collect it into my measuring cup, and that'll leave the seeds behind. Now I just wanna mention that the jam that I used was from a 12 ounce jar. This is not an exact science. If you have an eight ounce jar or a 16 ounce jar, it'll be fine. You're gonna have plenty. Now I'm just gonna pour my seedless raspberry jam back into my little pan here so that we'll keep it warm for when we're ready to baste the raw Cornish hens with it. Well, I just took these hens out of the oven and they look glorious. You could just serve them like this if you wanted. Now, mine took just about an hour and 15 minutes to reach the 180 degrees Fahrenheit in the thigh when I checked it with my thermometer. And all I use is this simple little meat thermometer. It's not an instant read. If you have one of those, that's even better. But this worked great. Now. Don't worry if what, happens, if what happened to me happens to you. <laughs> if the rice or whatever stuffing you're using falls out, it's not a problem. When we go to plate it, we'll fix it up and it'll actually look really nice. It'll look very abundant, you know, that there's a lot of filling coming out from the cavity. Well, I've got my warmed jam here. And I just want to mention, you may be wondering why I prefaced at the very beginning of this recipe to try and find jelly if you can. And the reason is when you put the jelly on your raw Cornish hens and then put them under the broiler, it creates a visual effect that almost looks like stained glass. It's very pretty. Now, the jam still looks very nice too. And when it comes to flavor, it's basically the same. And the bottom line is it's all about flavor. Now, if you have a pastry brush or this silicone type brush, this works great for this job, but if not, don't worry, you can do this with a spoon as well. You can just spoon some of your jam right on top and then just swizzle it around with the back of your spoon. Okay, I'm just gonna scoop some onto each of these hens and then we'll use our pastry brush to get this into every little nook and cranny. Now, I don't want you to worry if you don't have a thermometer like this. I just wanted to mention that you can definitely test to see that these are done the old fashioned way. You can give the leg a little shake, make a little incision. If the juices run clear, your hens are done. And since we are covering them with the jam,
or the jelly, whatever you have, you can easily cover up the incision with a little bit of the, ja the jam. So that'll work fine for you. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put these under the broiler. You only need to do this for about a minute. This is the only time you really need to babysit this recipe. You don't wanna walk away from the broiler because a broiler can really burn things very quickly. All you're looking for is for the jam. It'll start to get a little bubbly and begin to sort of melt a little and you'll know that you're all set to remove your hands. Well, these look absolutely glorious. Let's plate them up and take a taste. Well, I plated this up on a platter to give you a serving suggestion idea. I'm serving this with green beans amandine. They're very easy to make, yet they seem festive. You just get the thin green string beans, sometimes they're called haricover or French green beans. And I just put them in a frying pan with some butter and some sliced almonds, toss them around for a few minutes, and you're done. And I just think that they look so lovely with the rock cornish hens. Now, what I want to do is just take, I think what I'm going to do is take the, one of the little legs off and we'll give this a taste. And I'll also show you up close how this looks. Oh my goodness, it's so tender. I think that your family, your friends, here's yourself, you're gonna really enjoy this. I also cut into the breast so that you could see how beautiful it is. And moist, tender, oh, it's just glorious. Well, let's give this little leg a taste with the skin on it. I think it's gonna really be good. Mmm, mmm. Oh my goodness, it's so tender. When I went to take a bite into this, the entire piece of meat wanted to come off the bone. That's how tender it is. And the raspberry jam is just wonderful. It's got a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of tang. You're gonna really love this. Now, if you'd like more recipes that are perfect for festive times, different holidays, and sometimes just a fun family dinner, be sure to click on this playlist where I have a whole host of recipes that are easy to prepare, yet make a beautiful presentation. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.